I would like to begin our presentation today honoring the tribe's original distributees. For the Redding Rancheria, we look back on the contributions of 17 such people. These elders were the original landholders on the Rancheria when it was terminated. All tribal members are directly connected to them. It is my pleasure to introduce you to and recognize the 17 original distributees without whom we would not be here today. These elders guided us and showed us how to maintain our dignity and be strong and persevere for future generations. Their individual and collective efforts have given us everything that we have today, and we are forever in their debt. The traditions and storytelling are key to our culture. If you have attended one of our events in the past, then you may have heard our history. For those of you who have not, let me tell you our story. As you may know, we did not always live on this small rancheria. There was a time when our ancestors inhabited Northern California. As settlers continued to arrive through the late 1800s and into the early 1900s, many of our ancestors found themselves landless in our own land. By the early 1900s, the federal agencies began to purchase land as home sites for Northern California's homeless Indians. The Redding Rancheria site was purchased in 1922 from Grover E. Oaks. The parcel was part of the PB Reading Land Grant. In fact, the term Rancheria means a place for homeless Indians. Many of the early Rancheria members worked for local ranchers and farmers, picking fruit and performing other jobs. Clear Creek was a particularly important place for our families to fish for salmon. People lived communally, sharing gardens and raising children together. Water was carried from the natural springs of Clear Creek. The first homes on the Rancheria were a few 10 by 15 one-room houses built by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Life was hard, but bearable. These houses were invariably fire traps, many burning down and taking lives with them. Then in the 1950s, the federal government began to mainstream Indians, and in spite of countless treaties with the tribes across the country, Congress terminated all relationships with many Indian tribes. The Redding Rancheria was among them. The Redding Rancheria was terminated in 1959. The land was deeded to Indians residing on the land at that time, and ultimately moved from its special federal status, reservation status, to fee status, which meant the land would be taxed and could be sold. The United States government no longer recognized Indians living on the Rancheria as Indians. In spite of the Federal Act, our ancestors continued living on the Rancheria and maintained a community council as a governing body, much like our current tribal council. As years passed, the Rancheria land was sold to Indians and non-Indians alike. And as recently as 1983, a California District Court judge held in Tilly Hardwick versus the United States of America that the failure of the Bureau of Indian Affairs to comply with many obligations under the California Rancheria Act, specifically its failure to install a water system for the Redding Rancheria, invalidated the act. The Redding Rancheria and 17 other California tribes were restored to federal recognition. I hope you enjoyed a little piece of our history, and I hope you take away today that our tribe has a rich local history, and that we are a proud and determined tribe and people. I would like to invite our CEO, Ms. Tracy Edwards, to introduce herself and present to you our State of the Tribe. Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. I am excited and honored to be here this afternoon. My name is Tracy Edwards. I have the privilege of serving as the Redding Rancheria CEO. I am the granddaughter of the late respected tribal elder Betty Benner 
and the daughter of the late Art Spaulding and Patty Spaulding, and the proud mother of Tyler, Miranda, and Peyton. I am of Pitt River descent, and I am a Reading Rancheria tribal member. The first State of the Tribe event was held 16 years ago in 2001. Since then, we have held six State of the Tribe events. We hold the event about every other year. It became apparent to us many years ago that even though our elders were private people, we knew that we needed to share information about our tribe so that others wouldn't fill in the blanks for us. Before I start the report, let's check in and make sure you're all voting. Don't forget to vote for the organization that you feel is the most deserving of the proceeds from today's luncheon. I cannot see who's winning, so. Mercy Foundation. All right. Our tribal structure has grown drastically over the past several years. In 1991, we had four employees who shared an office on California Street. The General Council held their meetings at various locations from living rooms of our tribal elders to Angela's Pizza Parlor in downtown Reading. We could not have dreamed of what our tribe consists of today. The general membership leads our tribe. Our general membership consists of all enrolled members of the tribe. Enrolled tribal members are direct descendants of the original distributees. Currently, as of today, unless we've had a baby in the last few hours, our tribe has 179 adults, 157 minors, for a total of 336 members. As you can see, just like many governments, there are different branches, including health care, community services, as well as economic development that serve our constituents, Native Americans in the community, as well as the community as a whole. It would not surprise me if many of you or the causes that you support have been touched by the tribe in some way. Our tribe is governed by our tribal council. The tribal council is comprised of 10 members elected at large from voting members who must be 18 years of age. Each term of office is for two years and seats are staggered to allow for annual elections and a stable governing environment. Our tribal council meets weekly and their roles are to govern, promulgate laws, set policy, and protect the sovereign status of our tribe. Our tribal council meets regularly with local, state, and national officials for various issues related to our tribe. Our tribe understands the importance of participating and being active in the political process locally, statewide, and nationally. There is constantly legislation that is introduced that affects tribes directly. You might ask why this matters. Federal treaties and the United States trust relationship calls for federal funding for education, health care, and other government services, and we have to be aware of the legislation that affects these areas. Some current legislation that we are keeping our eyes on are the Tribal Labor Sovereignty Act. For 70 years, the law it was interpreted one way, and then in 2004, the National Labor Relations Board did an about-face without consulting tribes or writing new regulations and changed how they deal with tribes and their employees. The Indian Health Care Improvement Act is separate and independent from the American Health Care Act, and tribes have to be cognizant of the changes in health care legislation and how it affects Indian health care. These are just a couple of examples of legislation that affects tribes. At any given time, there are dozens of bills related to tribal health care, sacred sites, and gaming, just to name a few. We are proud to say that it has taken many years in education, but we believe that our local officials understand the sovereign status of our tribe. We want to recognize and thank the Reading Chamber of Commerce. Just this last year, they were the first organization that invited our chairman to present a resolution to business leaders alongside other government officials at their annual event. We appreciate their recognition, recognition of our tribe as a government. Our tribe's success would be meaningless and empty without the continued focus on our culture. Learning, teaching, and sharing our cultural practices is the focus of our cultural department. Our practice of our culture is to give gifts to visiting guests, and that is why our staff, tribal members, beaded necklaces to you to give to you today. Our cultural resource department is charged with the important task of monitoring cultural and sacred sites, especially during development. The department also conducts men and women's regalia-making classes, 
We have drum and language classes. We host workshops on building canoes. And most importantly, repatriating or returning home our ancestral remains. Last year, our tribal membership voted to support the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in their protest of the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline under Lake Oahe and the Missouri River. We sent 30 people in a bus along with provisions and spent some time at camp. Our members passed out supplies and food to the protesters and met with tribal leaders. It was a very spiritual quest for those who went. We continue to host our Stillwater powwow. The history of the origin of a powwow is a colorful one. Today, powwows are for socializing and celebrating our culture. Our inaugural powwow was held in 1990 at Shasta College. We are currently planning our 27th powwow. In 2015 and 16, we had a record number of vendors and dancers. We hosted approximately 10,000 people at the Shasta District Fairgrounds to watch the dancers compete for $15,000 in prize money. Please join us this year at this year's powwow held at the Shasta District Fairgrounds September 29th through October 1st. You may think that the tribe only provides services to its tribal members. But in reality, we provide many services to the Native community as a whole. Our Head Start Child Care program is one of our proudest accomplishments. We have operated the program since 1995. We have been held out as a model program year after year. We not only provide school readiness and a variety of ongoing health and wellness education, but the children are exposed to Wintu and Pitt River languages as well as an abundance of cultural activities. Our Nahasda program, funded through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Native American Housing Assistance and Determination Act, serves the needs of federally recognized Indians. Through Nahasda, Redding Rancheria is able to assist multiple low-income families with housing. We provide home ownership, counseling services, monetary assistance, rent, as well as support in unforeseen emergency housing situations. In 2015 and 16, we assisted over 71 families each year and granted approximately $150,000. The tribe also administers LIHEAP, or Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. It is a federally funded program that assists Indian households that need help with electricity, gas, and wood. In 2015 and 16, our grant allowed us to assist over 839 individuals each year. The Redding Rancheria Senior Nutrition Program, funded by the Federal Agency of Aging, offers meals to Native Americans who are 55 years or older and their spouses. We currently prepare meals in our community center three days a week, and in 2015 and 16, we served approximately 13,000 meals. We also include Tai Chi and exercise classes, musical performances, crafts and games, health checkups, cultural activities, and transportation to our services. We are in the 18th year of providing nutritious meals, fellowship, and services to elders in our area. Under the Older Americans Act, we also administer the Family Caregiver Program. This program provides support for the unpaid family caregiver. The Johnson O'Malley Program, administered by our Education Department, provides assistance to Native American families for school supplies. In 2015, we assisted 450 students and 483 students in 2016. In keeping with the tradition of sharing with those in need, one of the many ways that the tribe gives back to the community is through the sharing fund. Each year, the tribe sets aside $100,000 to help with things from sponsoring Little League teams to assisting schools with programs, helping send families to powwows, or merely providing individuals with things like food, clothing, and shelter. The sharing fund consists of funds that are directly set aside each year by Wind River Resort and Casino. The tribe makes it a priority to implement services and programs that support self-sufficiency for the larger Native American community. In 2015, Redding Rancheria's sharing fund assisted a total of 244 families and 179 families in 2016. The sharing fund assists qualifying individuals and families on a case-by-case -case basis with the following youth activity support fees, burial expenses, food, clothing, 
domestic violence support services, and catastrophes related to fire and flood. In 2015 and 16, this program aided individuals with over $157,000. One of the most important services that we can offer the community is the ability to access quality health care. From the time we took over a federally ran Indian Health Services Clinic at the old Bank of America building in Anderson in 1991, to transitioning into the building located on Churn Creek Road, to our facility now located on Liberty Street, we have continued to expand and improve our services. Our tribal health system provides access to services like family medicine, behavioral health, psychiatry, marriage and family therapy, acupuncture and herbal medicine, substance abuse counseling, full pharmacy services, dental services, obstetrics, diabetes case management, lab services, and community health. Our main campus on Liberty Street serves our Native American population and family members living in their household that reside within our service area, which consists of the western two-thirds of Shasta County and all of Trinity County. We provide care to approximately 5,200 patients, and we average 58,000 visits annually. We have also added 1,000 patients in the last year, last two years. One of the goals of the Tribal Council last year was to expand our dental services. Dental issues have risen to an epidemic level, and we knew we needed to see more patients immediately. In 2016, we completed a $750,000 expansion of our dental center. It was designed by Nichols, Melberg, and Rosetto Architects, and construction was completed by Schaffelberger Construction. Our new expansion added 2,500 additional feet, square feet of space, six new state-of-the-art dental suites, bringing us to a total of 13. This space will allow us to hire two more dentists, two more hygienists, along with support staff. In 2015, the Reading Rancheria recognized a real need to increase access to health care for the Medi-Cal population within Shasta County. Turn Creek Healthcare was open to all residents of Shasta County who have Medi-Cal or Partnership Health Plan coverage. Today, we have almost 5,000 patients assigned to us for their care. In 2016, Churn Creek Healthcare expanded services to offer a walk-in urgent care that is now open seven days a week. We now offer a full-service physical therapy and sports medicine department, along with cardiology services and behavioral health therapy. We are currently in the process of a major renovation of Churn Creek Healthcare to increase our size to 11 primary care exam rooms, seven new state-of-the-art urgent care rooms, on-site gym, diabetes group therapy room, nutrition services, and x-ray capabilities. One more expansion of services that we are extremely excited about that occurred recently at Churn Creek Healthcare was the opening of a full-service, medically integrated Suboxone Treatment Center. The Reading Rancheria Recovery Center will be open to provide access to Suboxone therapy to help residents of Shasta County with opioid and heroin addiction. This service will be instrumental in helping people get back on their feet and clean of their addiction. All of our Native American patients and partnership health care plan patients will be able to receive services. Our plan is not just to treat the addiction, but the underlying cause. Our patient plans will include meetings with a nutritionist and behavioral health professionals. I know most of us have been affected in some way by opiate and heroin addiction. If this is a small way that we can make a difference in assisting someone with an addiction, then it is worth it. In the spirit of providing access to quality health care, we are also excited to announce today that we are in the final stages of opening the new Reading Rancheria Trinity Health Center. The new facility will be located in Weaverville. This medical center will serve our Native American partnership population and all partnership health plan and Medi-Cal patients. We know that this will fulfill one of the Tribal Council's goals to better serve patients in Trinity County. Our plan is to be open four days a week. We are certain there is a need, and we want to be the ones to provide quality care in this area. We hope to be seeing patients sometime in August of this year. Reading Rancheria continues to grow, and during the past year, our non-casino workforce topped 200 for the first time. 
We are particularly pleased with the role we play in providing opportunities for Native Americans. At this time, approximately 40% of our employees are of Native American heritage. We are also proud of our success in retaining high-performing and long-term people. Currently, more than one quarter of our staff have been with the tribe for more than 10 years. Each day working for the tribe is an adventure. Our tribal staff is responsible for approximately 96 programs and 68 annual events. We could not do what we do without our invaluable staff. We do our best to practice our guiding values and make them relevant each day in our workplace. And every opportunity I get, I can't pass up a chance to recognize our Guarding Values Awards winner. Annually, we select six individuals who best represent these guiding values. In 11 years, we have awarded 66 winners. Our guiding values are doing what's right, working together, embracing change, serving others, respecting differences, and balancing life. I believe our wellness program that we offer our members and employees is the best program around. We continue to add and change it depending on what we hear from the participants. Our program covers many aspects of our employees' lives, including exercise classes, nutrition education, smoking cessation, stress management, family activities, community challenges, and gym memberships. Our exercise options have included booty yoga, reformer Pilates, self-defense, Zumba, boot camp, Tai Chi, hip hop dance, spring training, yoga, jazzercise, Ben, TRX, and cardio strength training classes. Every year we provide almost a thousand different classes for employees to participate in. More than 60% of our employees participate regularly. We partner with Healthy Shasta and the YMCA to ensure that we have the best options available. And these partnerships keep us in touch with the latest and greatest practices. Reading Rancheria has participated in many community events that promote wellness, like the Walktober Pedometer Challenge, Whiskey Town Waterfall Challenge, and the Healthy Shasta Bike Challenge. We could not manage all we do without our Public Works Department. They are responsible for caring for our facilities and properties, which include more than 500 acres of land, seven commercial buildings, five residents, and two grazing permits. Recently, erosion along Clear Creek has been a major ongoing project for the tribe, along with constant property cleanup that is a result of homelessness. Also this year, we worked with the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission and conducted multiple fish rescues on the Redding Rancheria's I-5 property. Due to the large amount of water released from Keswick, the Sacramento River has reached high levels followed by lower levels and many fish are unable to get back to the river as they get caught in large ponds and puddles as the river recedes. Fishery biologists were able to capture 1,224 Chinook salmon, 73 juvenile rainbow trout, and 19 three-spined spickleback fish and return them to the Sacramento River. An important aspect of protecting the sovereignty of our tribe is the establishment of its own tribal court. With the assistance of a BIA grant, the Redding Rancheria Tribal Court convened in 2006 and is currently presided over by Judge Richard Blake. The Tribal Court has delegated jurisdiction to the Tribal Court in several areas, including Children's Court, Tribal Employment Matters, Domestic Matters, including Marriages, On-Reservation Torts and Contracts, and Workers' Compensation. Since inception, the Tribal Court has conducted over 400 hearings with an increasing child welfare and contracts caseload. One recent milestone for the tribal court was the issuance of its first marriage license under the authority of the Rancheria's Domestic Relations Ordinance. We work closely with Shasta County and local law enforcement to ensure that our tribal court orders are recognized in the state and federal system. One of the roles of our tribal government is to ensure our gaming establishment is regulated in accordance with applicable laws. The Gaming Commission works closely with the State Gaming Regulatory Agency and the Department of Justice to ensure compliance with tribal, federal, and state gaming laws and to ensure that crimes are not committed in our gaming facility. Many people may not realize that Indian gaming is one of the highest regulated industries in the world. 
Reading Rancheria invests $1.2 million annually to ensure our compliance with the various laws. The California Bureau of Gambling Control has held our commission out as a model commission to other tribes in California. The Reading Rancheria government, through proceeds from Wind River Resort and Casino, also provides several programs for its tribal members. The tribe believes in promoting self-reliance, tradition, and family to our members. In our tribe, members who are 50 years or older are considered an elder and deserve compassion and respect. We offer many tribal elder services, including social gatherings and dinners, energy assistance, and pension. The tribe also offers a variety of programs such as health and wellness programs, small business grants, and members travel. We also offer child care assistance if you are working or attending school, tribal youth mentorship programs, tribal youth employment, tutoring assistance, and probably most importantly, the scholarship program. I cannot express in words how proud we are at the success of a growth of our education program. In 2015-16, we assisted tribal members attending 21 different higher education schools. And with great pride, we graduated six people from college over the past two years, including graduates from University of Idaho, Chico State University, DeVry University, Heald College, and two from University of Phoenix. And with an overwhelming sense of pride, next month we will be graduating Destiny Richardson from Shasta College, Elizabeth Romero and Rachel Pimentel from Paul Mitchell School of Cosmetology, and two former Head Start classmates, Danny Hayward from UCLA, and my daughter Miranda Edwards from Stanford University. Our youth leadership program is one of our proudest endeavors. It is expanded into an intensive 18-month program. The program includes children 11 to 15 years old and older youth mentors age 16 and 17. In 2015 and 16, 63 tribal youth participated. The classes consisted of lessons in tribal civics to managing budgets. We hope that keeping our kids active in tribal affairs will help keep them active in school also. And despite the fact that Native Americans graduate at a much lower rate than other students, our goal is to graduate all of our youth and to get them to higher education in a trade or a job. We believe that by letting our children learn and work together early on, they will be able to work together later in life to run our tribal affairs successfully. This month, we are celebrating our 24th anniversary of Wind River Resort and Casino. Our casino employs 419 team members. We have gone through many renovations and expansions. We opened the casino 24 years ago in the exact spaces that you are sitting in today. We started with high stakes bingo and a few slot machines. Wind River Resort and Casino has gone through three major expansions to lead us to where we are today. The most current expansion added the 84 room hotel and Creekside restaurant open 24 hours. The hotel offers a gym, an outside pool, an arcade, 6,000 square feet of gaming expansion, and 3,400 square feet of renovated casino space. We also opened the Wind River Retreat, a place very near and dear to my heart. We are excited this newest addition is being run by one of our young, intelligent, strong tribal women. Wind River Retreat is the only spa in Northern California that features both indoor steam and sauna. But I am guessing that some of you might be interested in the future of Wind River Resort and Casino. We would like to relocate Wind River Resort and Casino in order to free up land on the Rancheria so that we can better serve and house our growing population, as well as it makes perfect sense to locate our business to I-5. The I-5 properly, no, formerly known as the Strawberry Fields, is the heart of our tribal ancestral homeland. It is 1.6 miles from our Rancheria, and the tribe has owned the property for many years. The I-5 property is appropriate for commercial development. It is large enough to accommodate commercial development at 232 acres. It is on the I-5 corridor, and it will be located next to other commercial areas. In 2016, an agreement between the Department of Interior, the National Indian Gaming Commission, and Reading Rancheria was signed with regard to gaming on the tribe's I-5 property. 
This agreement states that the Reading Rancheria can operate a casino on the property by satisfying two conditions. One, the tribe must close its Wind River Gaming Facility on the reservation before it starts gaming on the new property. And two, before starting development on I-5, the tribe must complete its fee to trust application, including an intensive environmental review. And that's where we are today. On December 14, 2016, the Bureau of Indian Affairs conducted a scoping meeting to obtain public input as required by the National Environmental Policy Act. That hearing was the first step in the BIA's pre preparation of an environmental impact statement. We encourage our community to to participate by learning more about the tribe's proposed project and letting the BIA know which issues should be addressed in the upcoming EIS. The meeting was well attended. One of the major themes had to do with traffic mitigation. Our traffic consultants are working closely with the city and Costco's consultants to ensure there is a plan to address traffic. In the meantime, the BIA and the tribe are proceeding with environmental studies. Currently, the BIA is carefully reviewing all comments and is finalizing a draft EIS. And soon, the draft EIS will be circulated to the public for review and comment again. Throughout the NEPA process, both the tribe and the BIA will be coordinating carefully with the city, the county, and other local, state, and federal stakeholders. The tribe values its relationship with the city and the county leaders and looks forward to working with them to ensure this project benefits the entire community. The Reading Rancheria Economic Development Corporation, REDCO, is the business arm of the tribe. REDCO was established in 1995 and over the past 20 years it has continued to serve the best interests of the tribe by protecting its economic security. The tribe looks to REDCO as its business arm for diversification of investments and is responsible for acquisition and development of new or existing businesses to further the tribe's interest in self-determination and self-sufficiency. REDCO manages our Hilton Garden Inn that sits on a plateau overlooking the majestic Sacramento River. With convenient access right off the I-5 freeway, our hotel is a great choice for easy travel around town and to the many Reading area attractions. Redco also oversees the Wind River Mini Mart that opened in 1999. It was one of our first business ventures outside the casino. The Mini Mart offers an RV dump station, car detail center, and a quick, convenient car wash. And as you may have read, the tribe decided that it would close River to Sami Golf Course. After many years and major improvements, we determined that the business was no longer viable. The tribe is looking at all options for the future of the land. Reading Rancheria and all of its entities is one of the top employers in the county. We currently have approximately 700 employees that live in our community. We feel that in order for our employees to sufficiently provide for their families, we must pay competitive wages and offer premium benefit packages that include medical, dental, vision, 401k programs, tuition, and wellness incentives. Our tribe is invested in making our community a better place. We are not going anywhere. Our children and our employees' children attend schools here. We raise our families here. We want to keep money in our community, which is why it is our priority to use local vendors. We are proud to play a part in injecting $170 million back into the local economy in salaries, benefits, payroll taxes, and vendor payments. Supporting the community we call home is a hallmark of Reading Rancheria. Through the coordinating efforts of our public relations staff, the Rancheria is involved in nearly every major community event in the greater Reading area. Our involvement is not only through financial assistance, but also in showing up. The tribe, its members, and its employees can be found at important events such as Dancing with the Stars, Relay for Life, Think Pink, Shasta Mud Run, and the newest event, Giving Tuesday. Philanthropy is one of the top, tribe's top priorities. The tribe gives back in many ways. The major ways that the tribe gives back is through the Sharing Fund, the General Fund, and the Reading Rancheria Community Fund. Through the General Fund, some of the tribe's major donations in 2015 and 16 were $100,000 to One Safe Place, 
$25,000 for Kids Kingdom, $25,000 for the National Indian Gaming Association building in Washington, D.C. The Reading Rancheria Community Fund, established in 2001, is managed by the Shasta Regional Community Foundation. We are grateful to the foundation for their ongoing patience and support down our road of charitable giving. As you can see, there are many organizations that are touched by the Reading Rancheria Community Fund. Wind River Resort and Casino is the primary contributor to the fund, along with employee donations, individual donations, and this luncheon. We also host the Reading Rancheria Community Fund Dinner annually. The dinner raises about $50,000 each year for our community fund. The committee, comprised of tribal members, employees, and community representatives, grants approximately $100,000 each cycle. We are pleased to announce that we awarded $216,000 in 2015 and $200,000 in 2016. We have granted nearly $2.8 million since the inception. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Every year, we end our report introducing you to what is the most important thing in our tribe, our future leaders. When we started our presentations, this slide was fun and cute, but it has now become a tradition. We are blessed. I have no doubt that our future leaders will do just fine and take our tribe into the future. In our culture, all things are done for the seventh generation our children, and our children's children. And we must continue to keep that in mind as we plan and move forward. It doesn't matter what benefits me today. It's planning for the future. Someday soon I will join the elders table and know that the state of the tribe is heading in the right direction. I hope you enjoyed the report.